No, man. Sorry to bother you at this late hour, madam, but Mr. Thorpe is downstairs to see you. Oh, well, thank you, Joseph. Send him up. Yes, madam. It's my bedtime. What's so important that he couldn't wait until morning? I lied to Philip. About what? I destroyed evidence he was looking for. Evidence? About what? Beth Rains. Late. Where have you been? Out. Out where? It seems to be all I say these days. Where's Blake? Funny. I thought your burning question these days was where's Beth? Cut pretty bad. It might be broke. Oh, no. Sam, you want to go heat up some water and bring some fresh towels? Yeah, towels not water. He's gonna be all right, isn't he? Sure he is. Hey, he comes from good stuff. The best. <laughs> Mom. of you. He thought that you were chasing him. Oh, heavens no. In fact, Rusty called me to tell me that Harley had given Susan back to the LeMays. So it was Harley? Yeah, Harley confessed to kidnapping her. That means that Dylan is off the hook. Did you hear that? You don't have to run anymore. He's going to be so happy when he finds out that we can go home. You guys aren't out of the woods yet. Why not? Well, it's a little matter of his violating parole. His probation office is pretty upset with him. He's caught her a lot of trouble already. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, and then there's uh, your Uncle Ross. He probably got a one-way ticket for you back to Arizona by now. I'll worry about that later. Right now, what's important is for Dylan to be okay. He was so worried about Daisy and finding his mother. there for me when my asthma flared up, so I sort of owe him. Uh. <laughs> Can't we do something? Billy, he needs a doctor. Hey, tell me something I don't know. But where are we going to find help? Look, we're not going to get anywhere in this He thing. has a fever, and if that leg is broken, he, he, it has to be set right, otherwise he might... Here, just, just calm down. Okay? Hey, calm down. But he's my... He's my... 
He's my responsibility, and I got him into this fix. Hey, hey. We're gonna manage, okay? How? Sam's cooling his fever down with that cloth, and I got the, the blood stopped with the tourniquet. I'm gonna immobilize the leg, and then we're gonna call a doctor, okay? Where'd you learn so much about first aid? Well, they don't make house calls out on the oil rigs in Venezuela. So you know what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, sort of. Oh, great. Now, don't wring your hands now. Just tear up some of that sheet on the needle, a few strips. Okay? Now, what are we gonna use for splints? Uh... Bed slats? Not too big. How about that picture frame? We can cut it into pieces. The wood looks nice. That's perfect. Sleep. Perfect. But just keep tearing them. I need a few more. You all want to hold them here? Yeah, put this on and one more one. Thank you, Joseph. If you hear any glass breaking, it can wait until morning. Yes, madam. Now, you actually had evidence that Alan paid off a coroner to fake Beth's death, and you kept that from Philip? Yes, it's all true. Beth's body was never found. Oh, my Lord. Well, it's marvelous. Oh, poor Philip. Exactly. That was Alan's wedge between Philip and Blake. I was trying to protect my daughter's marriage, Alexandra. And father knows best. Was that it? I also thought it best for Philip not to know. You weren't here. Nobody could reach you. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Good? For whom? Blake, primarily, but all of us. Spaulding as well. Would you rather have Philip steady at the helm or off chasing a ghost? Why tell me all this? Ah, oh, Philip knows what you've done. Yes. And? He's confused. Well, as well he should be. If he can't trust his father-in-law, much less his wife. Now, just a minute. Blake loves him. She's trying to protect him from Alan's lies. What about your lies? You and Blake have just made a bad situation worse. I realize that. And now the situation has gotten completely out of hand because he is convinced that Beth is alive. Yes, I know. He told me the night of my welcome home party. But that is illogical. Just because she is not in that grave does not mean that she is alive. This is exactly what I was trying to prevent. It doesn't take much to raise Philip's hopes. Obviously. And now he has located the coroner that Alan paid off, who has admitted everything. I see. Then Alan was telling the truth. And there has been another development. What else have you done? Not I. Bradley Raines. That filth. What about him? He claims to have seen Beth. Really? Now... I don't think he's playing with a full deck. He also says that she tried to kill him. Given their history, that's even more convincing. You can't be serious. Oh, you're right, of course. But but I know Philip. He won't rest until he learns the truth, one way or the other. That's what Blake is afraid of, as we all should be. I understand her position, of course, but I, I must be honest with you. If Philip has any hope of finding Beth, I will support him every step of the way. Sure, it's wise to encourage Philip's hope of finding Beth. Better that he know I'm in his corner. At least that way I could be there for him. This whole business must be driving him crazy. And Blake? It's not easy competing with a memory. 
I'm sorry, Roger, but you and Blake need to understand what Beth means to Philip. She was more than the love of his life. She was his life. That part of our youth we all want to hold on to forever. Remember, Roger? When love was given deeply and freely, when it sprang from the soul, not mere convenience. Philip's not just looking for Beth. He's looking for the part of himself he lost when he lost her. Somehow, I doubt Blake will feel better for knowing that. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. You cared for Beth, too. I loved her. Like a daughter. My son Brandon loved her, too. If she's alive, she must be found. I will do anything to support that end. And I will do anything to protect my daughter. That's why I'm here tonight. I didn't want there to be secrets between us. Oh, be honest. You want me on your side in case Philip tries to fire you for what you've done. Okay, that too. <laughs> Roger Thorpe, honest. I must make a note of that in my diary. All right. Now, what do we do about Blake and Philip? We love them. Stand by them. Even if Philip finds Beth, that doesn't mean Blake will lose him. I mean, he loves her. Stop it! Stop it! You can't go in! Oh, she likes to see me. Welcome home, Your Highness. I'm sorry, madam, but Mr. Reed... It's all right, Joseph. I will deal with Mr. Reed personally. Yes, madam. Who would I just love it when you get hands on? Don't you, Rog? Well, you're not only late, you're urgent. Yeah, kind of. You leaving? I'm glad we understand each other, Alexandra. Good night. Good night. So, Blondie, you didn't call, you didn't write, you miss me? You know, I will never, ever forget that you saved my life. Well, Mindy, Rusty did help a, you know, he helped a little bit. He did find the drug that Will gave him. I know, you know, he was right about Will killing Rose, too. And you got to Will when no one else could. You're a hero. Thank you. I had to do it for Rusty. Well, don't you ever, and I mean ever, do that again. Do you understand me? <laughs> How many years have you been too yelling at me years, for being me? Too many years for me to count. All I know is that you've changed Lee since high school. Oh. Yeah, those good old days. Yeah, the good old days of you and me, <laughs> Philip and Beth, four musketeers. Did you ever think about those days? Since you seem hell-bent on knowing every move I make, I'll tell you. I went to Daddy's. Oh, God. No. You better try again. See, I know you weren't at Rogers tonight because I was there. But... I... Don't say Holly. Don't say Holly, because Holly was there, too. And incidentally, she's sticking to her original story that your father destroyed what was in the safe at WSPR and that you knew about it. My mother is lying. She's just trying to come between you why, and Daddy. Why, why would she do that, sweetheart? Why, what does she say in the game? How would I know? My mother is the one that's lying. No, sweetheart, you're the one that's lying. Remember, I just caught you. Now, what are you hiding? Look Nothing. What are you hiding? Nothing. Is there something else in that safe that you're not telling me about? <laughs> How would I know? Listen to me. Listen to me. Now, I know that you lied to me before, and I can forget about that, but don't you lie to me now. If there's something else in that safe, you better tell me about it. Now, was there something in there that I could use to track down Beth? Track her down? This is crazy! Beth is dead! No, she's not! There she's is alive, no and I am going to find her! Yes, there is proof! Yes, there is, and by the end of the night, there'll be plenty of proof. Wait, Philip, Philip, don't go, please. You're my husband. I love you. You want more life for the road? <laughs> yeah, Billy, I can't believe I forgot to tell you this, but Mindy's in the hospital. What? Don't, just relax. She's, she's going to be okay. 
Well, what happened? I, I don't know exactly, but Joshua got a call from Vanessa saying that, that, that she was doing fine and that HB was with her. Well, thank the good Lord. These kids of mine, uh... I don't know what I'm gonna do. You really should get out of those wet clothes. I'm fine. How's the boy? He's out cold, but I think he's doing okay. Good. I found some painkillers and I gave him some. I'm hoping that it'll bring his fever down. Sounds good. You knew about Dylan, didn't you? Yeah. We made ourselves a hell of a boy, didn't we? It's going to be all right. I almost killed him. Yeah, Our you, son. You almost killed him, right? I think he's going to be okay for the duration now. Hey, you can drink some of this. No, I can't. The caffeine's not good for the baby. That baby's been through tonight. I think one sip. <laughs> Come on, sit by the fire. Mm. Oh, that was good. So how'd you know? Hamp told me. He figured it out. That's why I gave Dylan the truck to get away. I knew something was going on, but I never would have guessed. Yeah, well, who would have? I mean, everything that was going on, and Dylan on the run, you know, I uh, didn't think it was quite the right time to tell him about his parents. Give him the truck. That made sense. All the rest of it, uh... Well, I just, just had to go away and think about that. And, of course, you do your best thinking in Venezuela? I never got there. You know, so my, I, I couldn't get that picture of Dylan sitting in the truck out of my mind. That poor kid, he, he acts so tough and he feels anything but... I just couldn't leave him hanging. How'd you know he'd come to Cross Creek? Just got feeling. I mean, he's half Shane, half Lewis. Where else would he go? <laughs> I guess loving Cross Creek is in his genes. Yeah. So, came back. Stand behind him. Set the record straight. I mean, you're going to tell Dylan you're his father? We'll continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. I have waited for this moment for so long. When Kristen gives in to Mick, will she give up on Clark? We're still married. And we can still make this thing work. It's all over between you and Kristen. She loves me. Your history, pal. The fight for Kristen heats up on The Bold and the Beautiful this week. This is CBS. Yeah, Mandy, I think about those good old days a lot. I miss the four of us. I miss Beth. You what? You know, for the longest time, I thought you hated Beth. Now, how could you think such a thing? Well, let's see. Um, let me think. There was a time... The time that you put her makeup on before the big dance, and you made her look like Bozo the Clown. I did not. Yes, I did. know I did She looked terrible. <laughs> no, she maybe looked like Raggedy Ann, maybe. Uh, maybe I was just a, a teensy bit jealous now that I think about it. Now that you think about it. Yeah, well, at least I admit it. Well, what, would it take uh, six, seven, eight years for you to come to that conclusion? Oh, what did you do? Save my life just to torture me? Am I doing a good job? Yeah, you are. <laughs> There's only one thing missing. What's that? Philip, how is he? Why do you ask? I don't know. He just seemed sort of off to me. You need some water. Let me get you water. No, I, I don't. I want you to tell me about Philip. Oh, Mindy, he's he's going through a he's going through a rough time right now. Why? What's going on? He's been asking a lot of questions about Beth. Yeah, he asked me about her when you came out of the coma. What is it? 
another time, okay? No, tell me now. Another time when I have time, all right? You're, you're such Look, a brat. You're not going to no, tell no, me. One more game of poker, and then I'm going to... Gonna get out of Fine. here. Fine, okay. that's my deal. Okay, five cards stood. <laughs> Do you remember how many cards for five cards stood? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I can't imagine Philip without that. And I can't imagine you up to your old tricks, Mindy. What is that supposed to mean? It means you just dealt yourself about seven <laughs> cards. <laughs> Let me see. I didn't, I didn't mean to. Look at this. <laughs> Three, three kings. Yeah. Hold on. I'm coming. Judge Collier, I'm so glad that you're still up. I, I was sound asleep. Do you have any idea what time it is? I'm sorry. I know that it's late. Uh, no, it's early. One o'clock in the morning, to be exact. I know, and I apologize, but this is urgent. Oh, I need to see that as it may. It'll have to wait until no, morning. No, please. It can't. It can't. It's very important. Please. I don't know what you want, but whatever it is, this kind of behavior is not going to help your case one bit. Either you leave or I'll have you removed. Judge, please, if you could just listen to me for just one minute. That's all I need. Please. You're Philip Spaulding, aren't you? Yeah. Now that I am somewhat awake, I recognize you from your father's sentence. Well, that's why I wanted to come to you, because I, I know that you were a fair person. Never mind the summation. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I can't tell you. All right. You have ten minutes. Uh, I, I won't take up much of your time, I promise. I, I just, uh, I need to get a court order from you. At this hour? I know. If you just let me show you some of the evidence that I brought, I think it'll, it'll be uh, a lot more clear to you. Uh, let's get right to it. Excuse me. What kind of a court order? What do you want a court order for? I need to have a grave exhumed. Sam, you're here. I have some good news. Reva talked to Rusty. Daisy's back home. Who, who took her? Harley, but she couldn't go through with it. She brought her back to the little maze. Good. Unless she did the right thing. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't oh, move. Man. Your leg is hurt. We're not sure if it's broken yet. Oh, oh the car. It hit you, but... Reva and Billy brought you back here. What are they doing here? Turning me in? No, no. They wrapped your leg and cleaned it. We're going to try and call the doctor as soon as we can. Oh. I felt like I was dying. Like I was just fading away. But nobody noticed. That will never happen. You'd miss me, wouldn't you? I sure would. <laughs> That's nice. It's nice thinking somebody would miss me. I had a dream, Sam. Was it nice? It was great. I dreamed that I was in my mama's arms. to know that I'm his father for me to be behind him. So, uh, won't. But you came back for him. And if I tell him I'm his mother, then he, he's going to want to know who his father is. Yeah. If you tell him I'm his father, then you got to tell Josh. I don't think Josh is going to like the fact that his brother fathered his wife's first child. The way Josh thinks he probably think I did rape you. Reva's just not going to fly, and you know it. I think it's uh, going to be tough for Josh anyway. 
So? Just uh, let him think it's a stranger. It's best for him and best for the kid, too. You're just going to give up your son just to keep Joshua from being hurt? No, I'm not giving him up. Coming back to Springfield. He's here. I get to see him. He's a benefactor. His buddy. Billy Dillon's not stupid. He, he's going to know something's up. He's going to want to know why you're so interested in him. Yeah, well, I just... Uh, I tell him that he reminds me of me at his age. And, uh... And I'll kick your sorry deal whenever he gets out of line, yeah, keep you guys. <laughs> you know, you kill me. You try so hard to be this gruff old hardliner. But you got a heart that is so great. I just hope Dylan turns out to be half the man his daddy is. <laughs> he really is beautiful, isn't he? She is beautiful. I can't believe that that beautiful boy in there is really my son. I knew it. Samantha. I knew that that's why you were at the Cody's. You were there too? Yes, I was hiding in the bushes outside. I couldn't believe it when you opened the door, but then it made sense. The way that you took an interest in him and the way you always rubbed each other the No, I, di I didn't know it then. But did you want to? Well, of course I did. That's why I was there to meet him. Why did he run away from me? He thought that you were there to take him in for kidnapping Daisy, but I knew it was too coincidental. Did it ever occur to Dylan? No, he was convinced that Cody was double-crossing him, that he called you and the police. He was so hurt. He wanted to find his mom so badly. He really wants to know about his mother. He thought if he could find her, he could find himself. Be whole. Dylan has so much going for him, he just doesn't believe in himself. He thinks that he's not worth caring about. That's why he gets in so much trouble, because he thinks that nobody cares. If you could just tell him that he's yours, that you came to see him because you wanted to get to know him. I will. I will tell him. As soon as he gets better. So what was the matter with Joey? Didn't have his gun, he wasn't happy to see me. Well, you know, he's just not fond of intruders barging in on me in the middle of the night. Not am I. Finish your branding, get out of here, I'm tired. Oh, no, that's funny. Because you were looking awful frisky with the mask man. Adam, I mean, Roger, was... <laughs> I'm not amused. That means you are laughing at me, not with me. What was that little tater tay about anyway? Was it business or was it personal? Uh, I thought I did have a whiff of your very finest perfume. Look, I've had some rather hard news tonight. I'm, I'm really not in the mood to play your games. Do you want to share it with me? No. I haven't even had a chance to absorb it myself. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone. All right, but just one more thing. Inquiring minds want to know. Do you and I have a future together? On top of everything else, I found out that the coroner that identified Best Body was paid off by my father. He was paid to say that it was Best Body, but it wasn't. It was a Jane Doe. So I found this guy, tracked him down, and he confessed to me that it was not Best Body that he sent back to Springfield, and I got it on tape. I'll play it for you. That won't be necessary. You believe me? What does Miss Rain's family have to say about all this? Well, um, her, her, her mother's very upset. Why? I would have thought a mother would be overjoyed to find out that her child could be alive. I know, but see, um, it, it, it took Lillian, uh, Mrs. Raines, it, it took her years to get over the shock of Beth's death. And I think she's just frightened at, at the thought of getting her hopes up if there's even the slightest possibility that I'm wrong. 
I'd need her permission. Oh, no, please. Let's not drag her into this. I don't know that she could take it. Don't, don't I have enough evidence with what I have here to justify doing this without bringing her into it? All right. Well, uh, let me review everything. Okay. And we'll talk about this in the morning. No, no, it, it has to be tonight. Why? If Miss Rain's body isn't in the grave tonight, it won't be there tomorrow or the next day no, or the next. Judge, please, I have to know tonight. Uh, no, you don't. Now, go home and get some sleep. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Where's Philip? I don't know. You don't know? No. He was here a little while ago. But he left. He went to find Beth, I suppose. He walked right through me like I wasn't even there. Your mother repeated her news about the safe. Oh, I know. Remind me to thank her for ruining my marriage, my life. It's not over yet. Philip knows I lied to him. He hates me for it. I could see it when I looked at him. It's all over. Everything I have worked so hard for, it's all gone! Now, you listen. He doesn't know Beth is alive. All he knows is she's not buried in that grave. We still have room to maneuver. Inches at most. You know, I tried to call and warn you after he came looking for you at my apartment. Where were you? Mm. I went for a walk. I needed some space, some time to figure out how to save my marriage. Unfortunately, the only thing I could think of involved murder. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, for starters, you could stop worrying about things you cannot change and start concentrating on the things you can. If you're going to tell me to can. throw myself into my work, forget it. I can't concentrate on the tower project. We're going to have to cancel it. No. Daddy, I can only spread myself so thin. Saving my marriage has to be my first priority. And completing Blakewood Towers is going to help you toward that end. Look, this is his Taj Mahal to you. Now give him a chance to immortalize you. Daddy, stop it. The only thing Philip wants to put in cement right now is me. He's so consumed with Beth, he can't concentrate on work anyway. Well, maybe he's too distracted to be able to stop things. I could handle it. I do have his power of attorney. You've got Philip's power of attorney? Maybe you're right. I should concentrate on the things I can control. Like Neil Everhart. He has Beth. If I get rid of Neil, I get rid of Beth. How would you do that? I could buy him off. Fine. Buy him off. How? I don't have the kind of money it would take to make two people disappear. Of course you do. You have Philip's power of attorney. You can do whatever you want. Like? Like? Sell off some of Philip's stock. Replenish the cookie jar later. No, I don't want to lose our controlling interest at Spalding. Make it a short-term deal. Uh, use the stock to collateralize a loan. Why not? It's the same thing he did to get the ransom money for Beth. Mm -hmm. The only difference is he was trying to get her back. I'm trying to get rid of her. That's right. I have a friend who might be able to help. You're going to make a call at this hour? My friend is always happy to hear from me. Oh, I hope you know what you're doing. Trust me. Hi. I know it's late, uh, but I wanted you to know my daughter Blake will be calling you in the morning to arrange a uh, short-term sale of stock. Why, that's exactly what I had in mind. I knew you'd understand. Thanks. Good night. It's all settled. Yeah. You just call this number in the morning. Okay? Ah, thank you, Daddy. You always know how to make me feel better. That's my job. <laughs> Can I make one more call before I leave? Of course.
Do you and I have a future? Of all the bloody nerve. You knock me out, ship me off to Arizona. Wyoming. Wyoming, then, some godforsaken prairie. And now you have the gall to ask if we have a future? Well, do we? Get out. You have no business in my bedroom this time of night. Well, you love it, and I know it. Get out! All right, I'll get out. Let's go down to the ballroom. We'll dance, we'll squeeze, we'll tease, we'll please, we'll do whatever comes back. You are natural. crazy, man. Yes, I am. I don't you know, know why I, I let you that in too. my house. Yes, you do, and I know why place. you let me in the house. <laughs> you pay people to answer your phone. Hello. Still up? Roger. Well, how sweet of you to call. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. What do you want? I just called to make sure your company wasn't disturbing you. No. My company is uh, definitely not disturbing me. Thank you for your concern. You're welcome. Well, I'll talk to you in the morning, then. Yeah. Yeah, good night. Good night. Now, don't worry. You're going to get the money you need without pulling the plug on the waterfront project. And that stock will find its way into very capable hands. Okay? <laughs> That's better. Don't make all the soup. You're gonna eat it. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, let's get it. Let's see about one more, okay? Good boy. Okay, now, uh, as soon as this storm's over, I'm gonna get a doctor up here and look at your leg. I don't think it's broke. But we can't take too many chances, can we? I'm gonna make some coffee, if that's okay. Yeah, good. I'll come down and heat up the soup. You, um, just stay right here, okay?
I almost killed you tonight. What were you doing out there in the middle of nowhere? I was looking for my mother. 